The problem is the mental output that we use chasing, buying and selling watches to do it over and over again. That's the problem. Everyone faces it at some point in the watch journey. And to think, without knowing you personally, I know you've had the thought of a one watch collection. Well, what watch was that and how do you feel about that now? Because I'm pretty sure you've probably got two or three more. You might feel like you need more, but once again, that's exhausting when every year a new watch comes out. Some of us have fear of not keeping the AD relationship happy and buying one watch a year is expensive. Buying one watch a year is expensive, even if you don't buy another one the next year. And we're thinking about a one watch collection that never seems to be a one watch collection. You end up with wanting more or actually buying more, which is just getting yourself into more and more of a rabbit's hole of watches. Even if you've loved watches for more than five to 10 years and you haven't just jumped on the hype since the boom, it's exhausting because you do have to always check yourself on, nah, I can't actually buy that right now because it's not sensible, but I want to. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And with expecting a one watch collection, with having more than you need, follows exhaustion. And uh, I've been thinking about exhaustion for around a month. And I personally don't feel exhausted because I feel that I gone through a collection of watches, realised what I want, realised what I am very satisfied with and I'm content. The only thing I have to do is remind myself I am content. But recently, a few close friends, a few watch enthusiasts on Instagram and we've all seen the videos on YouTube when our watch community, whether it's someone with a huge channel or not, they say they're exhausted. They say they need a break, etc. And it really hit home for me when one of my closest friends was like, I'm just gonna stop my watch Instagram, which I thought was the safest and best place for any watch enthusiast. But he was exhausted from wanting watches that he can't afford to buy. But every time he opens his social media, he's only seeing watches that he wants that he can't afford to buy, which is just a mental cycle, which is crazy. And he couldn't manage it to the point where he just quit for his own mental health. And he has a, a great life, I would believe, a great family, I would believe. But this was actually bothering him and it we went from messaging every day about watches to every so days, every every so few and few days to now, just to keep our friendship at an optimal level, I don't talk to him about it anymore because I know he's exhausted. A few other people have been quitting recently, saying it's, it's silly, wasting money, but of course we love the hobby, we love the watches, but they are expensive. Feeling kind of trapped towards AD relationships. How many of us have said, I'm not playing any AD games? But we are. Bless me. I know I wouldn't like to think that I'm playing AD games. The best way I feel when I go into AD is that I make it clear I only want one watch and I'm not accepting any other watch that's randomly offered to me. However, me going in there to have a conversation is playing AD games. Even though I feel like I'm telling them I only want this watch and I won't buy any other watch, it's still AD games. And to be, be truthful, each time I've been selected to buy a watch from the AD 
Thank you very much, both of those sales assistants. It did leave a bad taste in my mouth once I'd got home and realized I'd been selected because each time I felt like I was on the list, each time I felt I'll be so lucky if I get the call. And then once I got the call, I could kind of predict that I was gonna get the call because of the way they've been behaving. So then I kind of just know that there's no real waiting list. It's just when they're prepared to offer it to you, your sales assistant, which kind of makes me feel a bit annoyed because I'm playing the games and it's not really fair. It's just based on them. It's just when they choose to. That's a lot of mental output to be dealing with, especially when you're the one that's paying the money as well. A lot of money. So, yeah, I did want to just get this out because I've been thinking about it a long time. Recently, over on the Urban Gentry, just released a video of why he, very interesting video of why he does like and why he doesn't like the watch community's views about watches and how things are hyped up and how things have gone. It was, that was just fueling me to actually come and finally do this video now because it's coming from a place where people are, it doesn't feel the same as two to three to four years ago. It doesn't feel the same. It's not complete enjoyment. I think the highs, the lows, the ADs, the flippers have all played a big part in changing how this feeling was always euphoric to now could be annoying when you get the call. Please share with me. Can you imagine it being annoying that you get the call? Knowing that they're giving you a call because they decided to or cheekily they're giving you the call for something you didn't ask for and putting you in a position where you have to make a choice within two days of whether you're going to spend that amount of money while also being a bit fearful of if I don't buy it maybe they won't offer me anything else what is that that's crazy crazy either way what I'm planning to do um this explorer too has helped me realize what I like the lug to lug at 50 millilitres is fairly big, but I enjoy wearing it. But I'll be honest, if it was maybe the same lug to lug as the Speedmaster, I think that's at 49, just one millimetre less, make it perfect. Um, but realistically, I would love, now I've got Explorer 124270, Explorer 226570 and uh, SBGN 003 from Grand Seiko. I feel very, very content, but I'm also aware it'll be very smart of me if I can just have one watch. And of course, I've got one watch that I love that's 36 millimeters, and I've got one watch that is 42 millimeters. And they are offering me the best of both. However, I would like to make a choice and I think I would enjoy one watch. That's what I want to do. After my experience so far, that's what I want to do because I, I got drawn into the stories of being handed down a watch by your parents or being gifted a watch that your granddad or your dad wore through his whole career of his one job that he had or through a period of time that he relied on it. Those are the stories I love. And currently, that's not the stories I'm living. It's like I've, I've bought one that could last my lifetime and then I've bought another one and then I've bought another one and I've kind of lo lost the sentimental appeal to having a great, iconic, mechanical watch that can last me my lifetime that I'm remembered by by my family because I've got more than one it's not needed I've raised some things in this video I know let me know what you think if I've missed anything about exhaustion in the watch enthusiasm uh, portal or other things you know that's a problem let me know because uh, this is what it's about just talking sharing being open and learning 
Thank you.